latest trends and forecasts for the market in the European Union, Bulgaria, and the world. The data is from the largest audience researchers like eMarketer, HIS, IHS, I'm sorry, e-commerce Europe, and IAB. Now, please welcome on stage with applause our first speaker, Ms. Jeanette Naidenova, leader of research group IAB Bulgaria. Welcome on stage. Oh, just so we switched on the microphone. Where is your... And... Does it work now? Hello? Do you hear me? Okay. So, um, I prepare for you so many figures and facts uh, in order not to go sleeping in the morning. And uh, let's start with an uh, amazing video, video which, uh, for which I would like to thank my friend uh, Michael Leander. Do, you, do we know our users? Do we know our customers? Do we know what they want now and what they want in the future? So, uh, see the video now. Hi, I'm Abby. And I'm Molly. And we're digital natives. And we love shopping. Three years ago, I was banging on about libraries, but I've matured. I'm into fashion. DKMY, Colleg Dinigan, Louis Vuitton, and my favorite, Marc Jacobs. I buy all my clothes online from my iPad too. They look so good on the big screen. People ask me about bricks and mortar store, but I can't find their website. Anyway, I digress. I'm here to inform you that we fashionistas of the future all want a great customer experience. It's multi-channel online engagement that anticipates what we want and when we want it. There should also be in-dot sites, smartphone apps and live real-time shop assistants. Ways to help us when we get there. I'm in a constant state of information overload, so my friends are my most valuable asset. Before we start shopping, we read their recommendations, reviews, blogs, tweets, and Facebook updates to find out what's hot right now. So if I want to know if the latest Prada dress looks better in pink or purple, I just social search what my friends like. Finally, when will you fashion people get with the program? The net is about personalization. I should be able to collaborate directly with designers to create an outfit especially for me. Now, I'll totally be the coolest chick in Ray One. Now, I know you're all working on this, but I'm a digital native and I want it now. Hurry up and get cracking. Did you like the video? Okay, so let's go uh, to the real presentation with uh, really a lot of numbers and facts and uh, I think uh, you'll find it uh, very useful. Let's start with consumer. Consumer is everywhere and the environment where consumer is, is very fragmented. Let's see some uh, uh, key statistics from the research with IB Bulgaria and IB Europe made. Uh, the name of research is Digiscope, and this is for Bulgaria and uh, Southeastern Europe. Uh, let's see uh, how much time our users and customers are spending and where they are spending time. Internet, the number one media which uh, they really use every day 3.6 hours per day then tv uh, they use uh, tv and watch tv for bulgaria for two and uh, seven two point six six hours radio newspapers magazines uh, uh, less than tv and internet uh, let's see uh, Access to devices for internet users in Bulgaria. Smartphones have 
66% penetrations, uh, penetration among uh, internet uh, users in Bulgaria. Portable PC, 65. Stationary PC, 46. And if you see, uh, for these uh, three uh, devices, Bulgaria is ahead than Southeastern Europe. So Bulgarians are early adopters and are eager to learn and eager to try new technology. New technology. See the tablets, 28%, and is going uh, higher and higher is the penetration rate. Uh, E-readers as well. Bulgaria is ahead than the region, 8% penetration rate. So uh, fragmentation of our customers are going further, and if you see the time within mobile spent, the number one belongs to smartphones. Uh, then the portable PC, stationary PC, customers are everywhere, they use tablets, they use traditional phones, smart TVs, game console. So we, we need to know where and when our customers are in order to have a real-time conversation with them. And it's not uh, the whole picture. And it's going to be, uh, and it's going to get more fragmented world with the new connected car, with new wearable devices, Internet of Things, etc. So our life is not going to be easy. Fragmentation applies only to our attention. See what uh, the research showed for Bulgaria. 86% of internet users in Bulgaria, they are online while watching TV. This percentage for Southeastern Europe is uh, 75. And not only this, 65% of internet users in Bulgaria use internet in a few devices at the, at the same time. So it's really difficult to catch them and we we need to know where they are and when they are. Worldwide, the growth rate of media, 5.7% for total media, offline and online, and digital is growing 80% on an annual base. For Bulgaria, digital is growing 21% in 2015 in comparison with 2014. And mobile, is the hottest trend, 70% growth rate. So the difficult uh, task for marketers is to find the right target audience in a real time. That's why they use programmatic buying for the media. And we have this as a trend in Bulgaria, the hottest trend. Um, next big thing, next big Think and issue is attribution model. Uh, more than 50% of marketers are using last touch or first touch uh, point base for measurement. 21-34% are using multi-channel attribution approaches. And 24, these are worldwide data provided by uh, our partner eMarketer, 24% they don't know it, they don't measure anything. So, is uh, anybody of you using uh, omni-channel marketing? No one? Fashion days? IMAC? So, uh, the trend is coming. And uh, attribution and uh, measurement models are key. And cross-screen, Multi-touch attribution will become a reality for a large number of brands over the next 12, 18 months. And what the marketers are trying to do is ensure that across their marketing needs, the customer journey is not fragmented. This is the key issue. So smart use of data across devices is the only way to keep up with multitasking, digitally distracted consumers especially with younger generations. Let's see now some numbers, and a lot of numbers are coming on. Mobile penetration worldwide. Uh, in 
61.1% is the penetration of mobile devices worldwide, and uh, it's going to reach 67.1% uh, in 2009. Uh, it's for internet, see the internet penetration. It's less, 43% now, and expectations are for 51.5%. Smart users, 25.7%. In comparison with 35.2% expectations for smartphone penetration in 2019. See what's, uh, what is coming. And uh, it was a statistic somewhere uh, that the first thing which we touch in the morning is not your wife, it's your mobile phone. So uh, have in mind, the mobile is part of us. It's most personal device where we can reach in real time our customers. Some numbers from IHS, our partner, IB partner worldwide. Uh, see the smart smartphone shipments by operational systems. Uh, this year in 2016, there are more than one billion 200 million smartphone devices to be shipped. And the number one operation system is Android following then uh, by iOS, Windows, Blackberry, Symbian, and others. Worldwide mobile data traffic is going exponentially. And uh, see in 2016, uh, more than 120, almost 120 billion applications from which 98% are free will be downloaded. A huge traffic, a huge um, applications downloaded by the users. And now the infographics provided by uh, e-commerce Europe. Um, at a glance for 2015, 818 million people live in Europe. From them, 564 million, almost 70% are internet users, and 331 million from them are people, are e-shoppers. The, uh, the volume of business is 423.8 billion euro. And in 2015, in comparison with 2014, the growth rate is 14.3%. And now, uh, also the important statistic is 4 billion parcels are shipped uh, last year in Europe. And uh, almost 10%, let's say almost 10% are cross-boundary. So uh, let us see the expectation and the forecast 2016. Uh, the expectations are 400, uh, 540 uh, billion, uh, billion euro. Uh, and um, in 2017, 609. <coughs> uh, this is business to consumer e-commerce turnover for 2017. Now Eastern Europe, most of uh, you are from uh, East European countries and from Bulgaria as well, the majority. 248 million people live in uh, Eastern Europe, 129 million are connected uh, to the internet and 38 million people are e-shoppers. The average spending per e-shopper annual Every spending it 642. For Western Europe, it's two and a half times more. Uh, important thing is to know uh, that e-commerce for Eastern Europe is uh, almost 1.34 percent from the GDP, and uh, see the Bulgaria for 2014, the revenue is 200. Uh, 54 million euro for business to consumers. This is almost 1.8% share of online goods to retail goods. 
50% services and 50% goods is the portfolio of e-commerce uh, industry here. Uh, expectations for the region, uh, these are preliminary numbers, 29 billion for 2015. Later on, we will see the forecast of e-marketer for the region. Let's see Bulgaria, Romania, Ukraine, Russia, and other countries in the region. Um, every one of these markets has two digits growth. Uh, some of them are uh, growing faster than or earlier than the others, as Romania, if you see Romania, Ukraine. Uh, but uh, the revenue for Bulgaria for e-commerce for 2015 is 300 million euro. It's 18.2 percent growth. Uh, this is the picture by years. The data are provided by e-commerce foundation to e-commerce Europe. Um, it's a good uh, stairs up for the market. And uh, when we did uh, the Digiscope a media consumption survey uh, for the region, uh, there are purchase indicators which are research online, purchase offline or online, and research online and purchase online. For Bulgaria, 80% of internet users are searching internet and are uh, and buying online and offline and 66% uh, of internet users are researching online and buying online uh, see these uh, purchase indicators for bulgaria are higher than the region as well which is good for the market which is good for us what they research online and what they buy online or offline the number one clothes fashion Shoes. Number second, books, tourism, tickets, hotels, electronics, etc. You will see the, the whole trend. And what they research online and buy online. Again, clo clothing, uh, fashion goods, uh, shoes, bags, accessories. Then tourism, 16% of them books and other uh, product goods. 32% uh, from internet users researching online and buying online clothes. Can you imagine? Without trying the dress, without trying the shoes. So users have convenience in e-commerce. Uh, e-commerce industry created trust in transactions. So uh, this is a good point for Bulgaria, this is a good point for the region. And now let's go to the worldwide data. Uh, the time is very uh, short and I could not uh, show you everything, but uh, I really choose the numbers which are trends, which are uh, important for the future development of the e-commerce industry. Worldwide business to consumer e-commerce forecast. This is based on e-marketer numbers. Eastern Europe in uh, 2017 uh, will realize 43% growth in comparison with 2013. But if you see the picture, the highest growth rate will come from Asia, 174%. Then uh, Latin America and North, uh, then Middle East and Africa, 90%, following by Latin America, North America, and Western Europe is quite mature market. It uh, e-commerce business to consumer will grow only 43%. But uh, if you know how much will grow the total retail business, you will see that this is the fastest growth of the retail e-commerce industry. Let us see the worldwide digital buyer penetration by regions. Central and Eastern Europe is important for us. In 2016, digital buyer penetration as a percentage of internet users will be 44.3%. Remember, in Bulgaria, it's around 33, 33, 34. 
And digital bio penetration as a percentage of population for Central and Eastern Europe in 2016 will be 30.4%. By, uh, by the way, the internet penetration is Bulgaria, in Bulgaria is around 60%. Uh, it's, uh, <clears throat> uh, if, we, if we calculate uh, the total population is 7.2 or less nowadays but it is uh, really a huge number of potential digital buyers. Uh, <clears throat> what is important? In 2009, worldwide, digital buyers will reach 2.7 billion people. Uh, when e-marketers consider e-buyers, uh, the assumption uh, is that uh, the digital buyer need to buy at least once per year through the digital channels. Uh, in 2019, 2.07 uh, billion digital buyers and uh, the percentage of change uh, in the previous year would be 8.1%. Digital buyers are growing, but the speed, the growth rate is a little bit slower. If you see 12.3 in 2014, 11 in 2015 to 10.1 in 2016, and uh, it's going a little bit down as a speed. Worldwide e-commerce, retail. Uh, retail e-commerce sales growth worldwide. Let's see again our region, Central and Eastern Europe. In 2016, the expectations are 90.4% growth for retail e-commerce in southeastern Europe. Retail e-commerce is a percentage of total retail. See, in uh, the region is only 3.4% e-commerce to the total retail. Uh, but the trend is uh, uh, the growth to become higher and to reach 4.7 in 2019. Can you imagine Asia-Pacific, 20.4% e-commerce to the total retail? Um, I was at one of the biggest events in Europe, one of the top 10 events in the world, which uh, every digital marketing need to visit. It was the Mexico in Kion last year. And uh, it was a lady from uh, JK from Asia. And I was amazed when uh, she told that if the digital buyer order a good in the morning from this China e-commerce site, in the afternoon, whenever the digital buyer is in China, will receive the goods. I would be lucky to see this in Bulgaria. Basically, it's 24 hours delivery, the main delivery. Uh, and uh, I think that this is the last site, the last uh, numbers, retail e-commerce sales worldwide, presented by uh, the chart. Retail e-commerce sales in 2016 would be $2.05 trillion worldwide, which represents 22.7% growth rate in comparison with 2015, and 8.6% of the total e-commerce retail sales. Can you imagine the numbers? Can you imagine the possibilities for all of us? You can sell everywhere in the world. So this is the potential of the e-commerce market and I'm really convinced that some of you will become a worldwide players in the world. I wish you from all my heart. So thank you very much. If you have some questions, if you have some questions, I think that we have yeah, two, three minutes. Yeah, we do minutes. have uh, time for questions. Oh, you need uh, some time to realize the numbers, and I would be in the coffee break oh, outside. There is, uh, there is one question right there in the bottom. Okay. I don't know if we have a microphone. Okay, you know, there are no stupid questions. There are stupid answers. If you don't know the answers, it's or better not to answer anything. <laughs> I guess I can just borrow your mind, and that'll be can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, 
you talked about in the uh, China, which is a pretty big country of 12. I cannot hours. hear you from Hello? here, but Hello? Stefan, will you help me? Hello now. <laughs> In China, you, uh, you talked about 12-hour delivery, not 24, or maybe uh, how much did the delivery cost? Did, did, you, did you get this detail? A very fast delivery, but how much did it cost? Stefan, could you, um, could you, could you help me with the, the questions? Because I think that... I, okay, I guess that the audio system does. Well, basically, the gentleman wants to know the uh, the fast delivery in China that is 24 like you know how much did it cost to have such a speedy delivery that's the question right unbelievable logistic omni-channel logistic and they have let's say they have uh, black uh, warehouses uh, I think that this is the right terminology in certain key points around the country so they keep uh, stock in these black warehouses, and let's say mm, within 200, 300 kilometers, they service the customers by this warehouse. And in Bulgaria, you know, the, the big problem is the logistic. Uh, people have uh, stocks in uh, physical shops. Uh, they have small stock for e-commerce, e for e-shop, and they take uh, and collect different goods ordered from different offline shops around the country. And it takes one day to, to, to bring everything for one package, in one package for one client. So the logistic is uh, critical for e-commerce. And uh, I really suggest to invest in technology, to invest in uh, logistic management in order to be more competitive and to deliver faster. Because uh, if we remember the video, the digital natives, they want it now. They don't want to wait. So we need to provide this in order to be competitive. Com co competitive. All right, I think that we do have uh, time for just uh, one more question. So uh, any brave man or woman that uh, is curious? No? Thank you so much, Jeanette. Thank you very much for the question. It's a really good one. Thank, Thank you, you so much.